Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, today we're talking about the things you need to think about, be worrying about when it comes to how to invest the TSP as you approach retirement. Is it time to move everything to the G Fund? Is it time to do something else? What makes sense for you? Now, if you're new here, so good to have you. My name is Dallin Haas, a financial planner who helps federal employees retire and get the most out of their TSP and all their benefits every single day. And I absolutely love it. So today is actually, I got a question uh, on this topic. I'm going to read the question and then we'll go dive in and answer it. Okay. So this federal employee asked, good morning. This question is regarding the TSP. I am a border patrol officer and I plan to retire in September of December, 2028. So a few more, a few more years um, after now, I will be 52. When I first started with the border patrol, I heard when I am within three years of retirement to move my entire TSP to the G fund. Does this conventional wisdom still ring true? Thank you for your response. So great question. So long story short, the core of the question is, hey, look, I've got another three, four years. I heard when I was early in my career that as I approach retirement, you within three years specifically, I need to move my entire TSP to the G fund in order to be prepared for retirement. Is that a still a good strategy? And the answer is that was never a good strategy, okay? That conventional wisdom is only good at the water cooler. That's the only place where it, it, it reigns supreme, okay? Being 100% in the G fund three years from retirement is one of the biggest mistakes that I see. Now, some cases, it actually makes sense depending on what people are trying to do with their TSP and their goals, but most of the time, it is not even close to where people want. So let me, if we're talking about conventional wisdom, okay, and rules of thumb, let me give you a couple to think about. Everyone's situation is a little different. I've got whole videos on investing near retirement. You can check those out if you want. Um, but let me give you at least some guidance, some, some direction here. Conventional wisdom in the financial planning world, right? In my world, in helping clients retire and get the most out of their money, the conventional way, the standard way you can say to invest money in retirement is this. 60-40, okay? Meaning 60% of your money in stock-based funds like the C fund, the S fund, the I fund, and 40% of your money in things like the G fund, the F. So this is CSI, this is GNF. So again, 60% of your money in the CSNI-ish, right? And the remaining 40 GNF. That is the standard quote unquote conventional retirement allocation. Okay, the way people generally, if there was a standard, there's no perfect answer for everyone, but this is kind of the stereotype of investing in retirement 60 40. So that is going to be a lot closer to what most people are going, are, are going to want to do compared to 100% G fund. And let me tell you why. The big problem with 100% G fund is it, if the goal is to maximize how much money we have tomorrow then the G fund may be the best answer. However, if the goal is to make sure you never run out of money, your money lasts for the next 30, 40 years, and you can maintain your standard of living over time, the G fund is not gonna do that for you. It depends on the goal. The vast majority of the time, most federal employees are gonna want a nice balance. They're gonna want some of their money. I don't know the exact percentage for you. Check out my other videos about that but some of the money that's going to grow over time. And is it gonna be a little more volatile? Yes, it is, but that's okay because you've got 40% of your money or whatever percentage makes sense for you. You've got some safe money in the G fund, the F fund, things that are gonna be more stable that you're actually living off of and spending from while these things are growing over time. You need a mixture of both. If you have too much of one, you're gonna have issues. If you have too much here, you're gonna have way more volatility than you want. If you have too much here, you're not gonna get the growth and your money's probably not gonna beat inflation the way that you want and your money may not last your entire retirement. It's a nice mix that we're all trying to look for in retirement to make sure you can reach your goals, right? That the money's there for you when you need it with some safe money, but at the same time, you've got some money that's growing for you and allowing you to make sure you can maintain your standard of living, not just now, but over the next 20, 30, 40 years as well in retirement, okay? So again, be wary of the things you hear at the water cooler. Be wary of where you get your information because it will affect your retirement. It will, it will. The things you hear and don't fact check and don't actually research will impact your retirement. The things you don't know will hurt you. 
okay, will hurt you if you apply things that simply just aren't good principles. So keep in mind, I, this is not true for everybody. It just depends. But at least it'll give people at least a direction of where, where they might want to be come retirement. So I hope that's helpful. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.